What's up guys, Nolan here, and today there was a community cast hosted by SneakyRU, Geeksy, Iron Fist, and Sigma, where Nikita actually answered a ton of questions for about two hours. If you want to catch the full cast, it will be a VOD on Sneaky's channel, I'm going to have that in the description. On top of that community cast, there was a new scav event that started today, so if you have minus one karma or less, you are going to be hunted by scavs. If you have zero karma or more, scavs are actually going to help you survive, and what seems to be happening is if you have between negative 0.99 and negative 0.01 karma, Karma, they actually just treat you about the same as always. So if you do have negative karma right now, just don't scav this weekend or else it will get lower since you will need to kill scavs in order to survive that raid. There was also a new quest added for fence where you will need to kill three PMCs in one raid without killing any scavs. If you kill a scav, you will fail, but you can try it again. The quest is unfortunately not repeatable, but it will give you plus one fence rep for doing it. I thought that would have been really good for negative karma players, but oh well, it's not repeatable. Now back to the community cast. A ton of the questions the answers has been covered on my channel over the past few days so i've narrowed it down to the super important and the new stuff specifically nikita did say there will be a new tarkov tv soon which is the official dev cast for escape from tarkov so keep an eye out for that nikita wanted to make it clear that there's going to be four patches before the end of this year and it all shows up in the reddit post he made before but what's interesting is that all four patches are being worked on simultaneously and even a lot of testing going on for each patch along with that nikita also wanted to mention that the arena Arena mode is in full production, but he does not want to discuss it just yet. Something really important here, which I'm really confused how people haven't heard about this yet, is again, Nikita has confirmed countless times now that there is going to be proximity VoIP in the game and it's coming with patch 12.12. It's going to be switched off by default and you will be able to block, mute, and even report to potentially ban anyone that messes with you or uses it incorrectly. There's also going to be an option to mute everyone but the people that are in your party, but of course everyone will still be able to hear you you just won't hear them i really don't see any problem left about voip there really shouldn't be anything that you wouldn't be able to do with it like i said nikita was terrified of voip and it looks like he's really figured out how to implement it correctly voice lines are going to be coming with scavs but they won't be in english we'll have to figure out what they say by doing the voice lines since they will show up in english in the ui and then get used to it from there they talked a lot about what's going on with the dynamic loot and everything where nikita said it seems like every time they make a big change everyone freaks out and then eventually gets used to it so they're really keeping that in mind going forward. Basically what they're saying is anytime they make a significant change, we're gonna need to put a couple days into it at least before we start freaking out or they make some changes. And just like VoIP, we really need to try to get the word out better about this. Nikita specifically called the dynamic loot change a change and even said specifically, it is not an event, it is here to stay. So that's the end of it. This is a permanent change and we need to adapt to it to move on. He talked in detail for a little while about it. They are continuously tweaking loot spawn locations and rates to find the sweet spot for loot. They're using heat maps to determine locations of loot, so we need to start searching inactive areas more. They're trying to stay focused on high value loot areas instead of a specific spawn. So loot will spawn in the building instead of a specific room or in a room instead of a specific shelf. And it obviously differs depending on what that loot is. BSG didn't like that people got used to running to a very specific location on each of the maps. And Nikita specifically wanted to say that loot stayed the same initially, but now they've even buffed it a lot, so there's even more spawning, it's just in different spots. They want to make every raid feel different to people, and this dynamic loot system helps do that. Heat maps show players moving around the entire location now, instead of only one to three specific spots, but it's obviously brought combat down because everyone's just kind of looking for the loot. They are going to mess with things until they do find that good middle ground between not being able to find the loot and combat. The Omnicron container might come with patch 1212, and if you haven't heard about it yet, it is the in-between secure container for the Epsilon and the Kappa. It's basically a gamma with an extra one by three slot. So it's not four by three, it's just a three by three and then a space and then a one by three. They talked about events a lot and randomly I would get bits and pieces of new events that I haven't heard about before. Nikita mentioned something about the possibility of an open door event where you will not need keys. That would be interesting. And then the rest was basically just a mix of a certain type of loot not spawning like meds or ammo. They discussed how the team is doing overall and Nikita wanted to mention that they do have over 150 devs right now at BSG, but they are still about a 50-50 in terms of people working in the office and people working from home. He did want to say it's much better now though. The discussion about rats and chads came up again. Nikita himself is not against casuals, but 
he did say Escape from Tarkov is kind of going to be. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy the game as a casual, you just need to realize you're probably not going to be able to do a lot of the things in the game. He specifically said it's going to make you learn and adapt, and you need to be able to use your specific advantages in each and every fight, which you're not going to be able to do that if you don't put some serious time into the game. They talked a lot about advanced animations again, where again, people didn't hear about this stuff. So if you haven't heard about it, there's going to be more controllable blind fire, new gestures, an unconscious state, vaulting, working ladders, switching your main arm for your weapon, and more all in one patch. Because people hadn't heard about the unconscious state, they talked about that for a little while, and Nikita actually gave us something new. There are going to be different levels of unconsciousness in the game. There are going to be some types where you will wake up as a solo player, but there are going to eventually be types where you will need a player to help you up or carry you to safety so that you are going to be able to get back up on your own. They weren't super specific with how or when you would want to use this stuff, but they did say epinephrine, more morphine and even the defibrillator might be needed in order to bring that unconscious player back up. During that, they were talking about how BSG are still thinking about making it take longer to put items into your secure container. Like you would need to unlock it and then place the item and then relock it, as well as having an animation go along with that with the advanced animations, but they're only thinking about it. They haven't decided yet. Nikita also said there are three or four new types of malfunctions coming, one of which being a hard bolt lock, as in your bolt locks back or it jams on something and you're just not going to be able to push it back forward, making your gun useless unless you're able to take it apart. There will also be a soft lock where after you try for a little while, you will be able to get the bolt to work again if your weapon allows for it or if your skill was high enough to figure it out. Nikita said that inertia is going to be coming to the ETS soon, but it's under NDA. We need to remember we're not going to be able to know too much about that. They talked about the possibility of some new kinds of stims that aren't stims. They're like vitamins and stuff that would be cheap and would give you a very quick boost to stats that stims do. They made a joke about vitamin gummies and dinosaur vitamins and stuff like that. Specifically during the live stream, Nikita buffed GPU spawn rates significantly. So if you guys are looking for GPUs, now is the time to go search. They talked about daily quests for a little while. Nikita said that dailies are mainly for people who have completed everything already, but they are going to be available to more people. He said they will be dynamic personal quests generated specifically for everyone and there won't be very much overlapping. He also said it's going to be mostly XP, money, and items. They're not quite sure if they want to add rep yet because it might mess with traders too much. They finished up the cast talking a lot about the Lighthouse location and Nikita said that Lighthouse is going to be released in segments. There's a possibility that it will have no bosses at the first release and that the Lighthouse building itself would also be locked or locked off by snipers or something. He did say that the first iteration will have the in-raid trader though. He gave some more specific details that some of the areas of Lighthouse are close to completion and that it's likely they'll be teased soon. He also mentioned that 10 to 12 players are going to be the limit for Lighthouse and that it will indeed in terms of the total area be about half the size of shoreline geeks he mentioned this and nikita agreed with him that basically just picture original shoreline like before we got the expansion that added everything to the north of the resort and then just make that more narrow and add a big lighthouse to one end and that's basically lighthouse nikita said there's going to be four bosses on the location all with similar mechanics i'm wondering if that one sniper boss has now turned into four we're gonna have to wait and see and nikita also mentioned a rideable train that goes around the map with heavy weapons on it that's also an extraction. However, he did say that's not going to make it into the first iteration either. So either way, at some point in the future on Lighthouse, we could have up to four bosses. They might all be snipers and a train like we have on reserve, but with heavy weapons that we can use to shoot at people with. Then before they ended, somebody mentioned Halloween and Nikita said he actually forgot about the Halloween event because they were so busy. So he made sure to take a note about it. And they said they are going to do a Halloween event and they had something special in mind for it. And that was everything from today. We had a ton of news over the past few days. So tomorrow, I think I'll get a video together that combines everything, but we'll have to wait and see if something else pops up on top of everything we already have. However, until then, if you are looking for people to play with, check out our Discord. Link is in the description. For the latest Tarkov news, check out these playlists here. If you like this video, then you know the drill. Please subscribe. I really appreciate the people who do. Otherwise, I hope you have a nice day. See you guys.